and also oh my gosh i should have said this before i don't want to trigger anybody i'm just gonna let you guys know that i might be talking about you know um different i won't be describing any different any like assaults or anything like that or any examples per se but you know i don't want to trigger anybody but some people don't wouldn't make might not even realize that they've even been coerced into doing things that they might not necessarily have done if they weren't convinced to if that makes sense so yeah we'll be touching on those those things today just to let you guys know right consent in a sexual um capacity is that both or all parties who are going to take place in that sexual activity emphatically and enthusiastically agree to it and that they can change their mind at any time basically and it's a case where they're because someone has said oh yeah they're happy to i don't know give someone fellatio that doesn't mean they're because you've given someone fellatio they've agreed to actually have intercourse with you so it's about you asking at every step of the activity um if it's all right for you to you know go further or to do something else or try something else and things of that nature someone can change their mind at any time do you get what i mean it's not that because they said yes in the beginning that doesn't mean it's necessarily going to be yes throughout they might want to stop for any given reason and they're in their right to it's not for someone to be like oh but you already said yes or no it don't work like that you know the fears of things like porn and stuff like that come into play here because those that watch porn don't necessarily ever see that there's been any form of consent given when it comes to sexual activities. You just see the people doing what they're doing. Usually the woman looks so objectified. She's, you know, having to please the man and this and the other. She's, you know, putting all different types of positions. There's no form of consent given on both ends as to whether it's acceptable. We just accept it to be that way give me a sec guys when it comes to um getting consent if the person is you know high or drunk someone can easily say oh but she she said it was all right or he said it was okay but if that person is completely out of their head on drugs or totally drunk um being taken advantage of when they're drunk and stuff of that nature maybe even encouraging the aggressor, should I say, um, to actually continue doing what they're doing, even when you're drunk out of your head, you don't know what you're saying, you didn't consent to it in the first place. Um, you know, all of that kind of stuff can come into play, basically. Or under the age of consent, which I said is 16 um, in the UK, um, is ill or feels like they're under duress. You can't get consent from people from in that respect. Yeah. Also, you can't get consent from anybody who is suffering from any type of you know mental illness or is uh, unconscious. Um, how can someone who's unconscious consent to having sex? It's it's not possible. Or if the person has any type of like a special needs that can cause them to not have the capacity to decide certain things um so like a learning disability or like a yeah, special needs that might not let them understand what they they could possibly be consenting to if that makes sense um also like if there is any type of like a um, power imbalance so like a let's just say maybe a therapist and a client or a pastor and um a, someone in the congregation um a teacher and a yeah a teacher and a student um you know if there is any type of a and yeah we hear it like i don't know if you guys have heard different um stories of teachers and usually they're women as well you know i've heard them about american teachers and also about english teachers who have taken advantage of kids that are like 13 or 14 years old and things of that nature now, just recently actually if i'm remembering rightly so yeah it definitely does happen and it's not just you know men who are perpetrators of certain things do you know what i mean just because someone has allowed you to kiss them um at a party that doesn't mean you know if they invite you home 
they want you to have sex with them it has to all like i said be discussed so it has to be agreed at every stage at every episode just so that we're both we're both clear as to you know what's going on and what's going to happen and things of that nature and like i said if the person chooses that you know they actually don't want to carry on or they don't feel comfortable it's it they're in their absolute right to um you know stop it at any stage uh without feeling any type of guilt any type of way because you know it's your body do you know what i mean so yeah this can happen like i said it can be happy it can happen within a uh, marriage it can happen within a, a monogamous relationship it can happen within a polyamorous relationship it can happen within a um queer relationship it can happen within a po uh, did i say polyamorous already i'm trying to remember what i said like, in my other episode make sure you go and check that one out as well consent runs through every relationship every type of relationship every form of relationship it runs through it it that is not for just for he he um, heterosexual relationships and gay relationships have to work themselves out no it works across the board yeah across the board don't forget that you know consent getting consent it might seem like a like a boring form of discussion of you know getting a clipboard out and saying oh will she let me touch her hair or will he let me touch her and ticking it off but no it's not really it's not it's not it doesn't have to be that anal do you know what i mean you might have to discuss about anal as well that way you know what i'm saying no but seriously it doesn't have to be that you know um monotone for want of a better word it can be in the moment but it has to be accepted if the 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 response is no do you get what i mean you can't you know push it or anything like that and it's all about communication that's the best way to obviously get you know consent from your partner or from whoever you decide to lay down with it is about you know communication about what you like or what you don't like and letting your partner understand that before you know you start anything or even whilst you're starting or you know things of that nature just so that everybody knows where they're standing so do you know what i mean communication is really key because that's what's going to open the door to your sexual journey together i guess because like i've been learning about you know kink and you know people liking kink and kink does have some sort of a stigma to it that you know a lot of people think that for someone who to enjoy kink there must be you know something wrong with them or they must have been you know abused in their past and you know they that's why they want they like torture and all of that stuff but kink is a spectrum of different activities do you know what i mean and if you know you your partner likes kink and they want to bring it to the bedroom there has to be some sort of an avenue or a way that they can actually bring it and it can be discussed or you know in a way that is you know welcoming by their partner or by whoever they they're with and things of that nature do you get what i mean and all of that will lead to either it being consented or not consented but it has to be discussed do you get what i mean and that's the whole point all everything all of this everything basically needs to be discussed to see where they go from there really i mean it's 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 hard sometimes for people to discuss these type of things in an open honest way but it is the best way if i'm being totally honest with you um it hasn't always been mastered by many of us um but you know just to be able to discuss consent in a way that can bring understanding in a relationship can do wonders for the relationship basically it really can it's something that can you know make your sexual relationships so much more richer because you're getting consent for to do stuff that you enjoy and you're bringing your partners along that's basically consent and um like i was saying before where it can get a bit techy is when like I said, you're being coerced into doing something that you don't want to do and then afterwards you feel some type of way, you feel like you don't have that good memories of what you've done, do you know what I mean? And that's where the conversation needs to be spoken about, about, you know, consent and 
people accepting our no's to be no. So obviously when you're with a new partner and stuff like that, it could be a bit techie to understand, you know. I don't know why I keep on using this word techie all of a sudden. I hope I'm using it the right. <laughs> yeah, a bit technical. I think I think that's where I'm getting it from. I'm sure I've heard some say before. Anywho, like it might be a bit difficult to understand what someone likes or the dislikes are. That's why it's always good to communicate, you know, what do they like, what don't they like. And the consent runs through everything. Obviously, I'm talking about being intimate with someone, but it runs through every part of our lives, do you know what I mean? And from when we can normalise speaking what we want and what we don't want, it will get us get us what we need or what we want so much quicker, do you get what I mean? And that's what consent can do. See, with knowing your partner, if you are doing something that they don't enjoy, it's easier for you to understand, understand their body movements or maybe they're not doing, they're not as enthusiastic when you do certain things and then you can then again stop, find out, is everything all right? Should I continue? Don't you like it? Should we try something else? All them things then, that all comes from communication. All of it comes through communication and discussing what your preferences are basically. Just preventing any form of misunderstanding. Me saying all of this is not putting the blame on anybody that has had, you know, had, that has felt like they've been coerced or anything. Trust me, I know. I'm not putting the blame on nobody. Trust me. Um, uh, it's just so. It's just knowing that we are. We have the right to say we don't like something. We don't want something. Or we prefer not to do something is our right and no one can take that away from us and we shouldn't feel any type of way to say no i don't want to do this sorry i don't like that can you stop doing it and things of that nature how i see consent it is it brings comfortability do you get what i mean consent brings comfortability for both parties or however many people are in that sexual um, episode it brings comfortability and understanding and communication and enjoyment you're engaging in these things to feel enjoyment so you know to be able to discuss what this what enjoyment you prefer is something that's going to create more enjoyment isn't it i wanted to talk about the um the tea the, what's it called the consent and tea analogy where you know i'll put some sort of a description or a link below where you can see where it's like i was saying to you i use jollof some people have used tea i could make like i said you've agreed that you want Ghanaian jollof yeah and you've been brought nigerian jollof that's not what you agree to and so the fact that the person's gone and prepared it put all the spices in it made it cook and then overcook so that there's a smoky burnt taste to the nigerian jollof and they've come to you and said take it it's delicious it tastes nice and burnt you don't have to take it you're not in any, you're in your right to resist, you're in your right to say no, you're in your right to reject, you're in your right to say no. Basically, you're in your right. And the person who's cooked it might feel hurt that they've put all that energy into burning the rice and them things there, but it's your, it's, it's not your, it's not your business. It, 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 you don't have to have it. Or maybe you might decide, okay, cool, I'll eat half. I'll eat half of it just to, even that in itself, even having eaten half, you've been coerced into it. You, it wasn't on your own, you know, merit, if that makes sense. So, yeah, but there's an analogy using tea. So I'm going to put the link in below somewhere of you guys looking at the analogy of using tea when it, when, using tea when it comes to um, consensual sex. The law when it comes to um, consent is very clear. Um, just because a sex worker has come to your house and they're not even working. Imagine they're not even working, they're just coming to your house. You can't assume that because of their, their popularity as a sex worker, they're gonna wanna have to want to have sex with you. You can never assume someone's um, sexual wants or desires because of what they've done in the past. Like I was saying to you, it could be from, it could be between a husband and wife. Is If a husband doesn't wanna have sex with a, um, the wife, they're because they've had sex before, 
So the the wife can't be like, oh, but you've sexed me before. Why won't you do it this time? And do you get what I mean? Their choice has to be respected, and that goes for men, uh, women as well, obviously. Do you know what I mean? So with the tea analogy, with the jollof analogy, you might have eaten Nigerian jollof, and then this one time you thought, you know what, let me go on to the greener side. Let me go and taste that delicious jollof, that Ghanaian jollof that people have been talking about for all these times. Let me go and finally taste it. And so you've decided to have it with this jollof. You can eat half and decide, okay, I don't want no more. I don't want any more. You can start eating the Nigerian jollof and then you'll be having flashbacks of the fact that, you know what, this jollof is just not as nice as Ghanaian jollof, you know. Why did I say I'm gonna have that during jollof? Why did I agree to take? You can stop, you can stop eating it. You can stop having the sex. You can stop doing that sexual activity. You can stop being touched where you don't like being touched. You can stop being touched where you liked it before, but this time around you don't like it. You can tell the person to stop. You are in your right to do that. I that person who's made you the Nigerian jollof can't just be like, oh, but you've eaten it all these other times, so I assumed you would have wanted it, even though you told me one garden and jollof. It no work like that. You have to get permission or consent every single time when it comes to sexual activities. You've got to enthusiastically, positively, without any doubts in any of the party's mind, want to have sex or want to have that Ghanaian um, Nigerian jollof. Okay, forget about the Nigerian jollof. Let me just talk about sex, seriously. You have to, both parties have to be in agreement that you want what you want, they want what they want, and it's in total agreement, positively, emphatically, without any shadow of a doubt. I hope I'm making sense. One of the main reasons why I wanted to do this um, well, there's two, I, like I said, obviously because of my course, but another reason is because I watched I May Destroy You with Michaela Cole, and I love that woman, I love her. And she's my Ghanaian sister as well, so I love her even more. But that whole series was just scenario after scenario of different sexual offenses and different sexual assaults that can happen. And I didn't even know that it was an assault for someone to take off a condom during sex. And it makes sense because you haven't consented to that, have you? You didn't consent to them in the middle of doing what they're doing to take it off. So that really does make sense. And I also didn't realize a man being dry humped could be um, a form of sexual assault as well. Um, but it all makes sense because there was no consent. And like I keep on saying, it's, it's the lack of consent that makes something an offence. Do you know what I mean? I mean, if you guys haven't watched I May Destroy You, I'm, I literally binge watched the whole thing last week. And it's just a piece of art how, how different scenarios of sexual encounters that are that push the boundaries of consent and that um, are non-consensual are shown. I've got to say the reason one of the other reasons why I'm doing this is because we weren't really taught about consent in my day from what I remember I, it wasn't something that was spoken about in our sex education class because of this heteronormative idea that you know men love sex and stuff like that even they can have a pre the pressure of not wanting sex but having to say yes because they are the man and that kind of stuff i was watching a man what's his name his name is ben hurst and he speaks on like sexual issues for men and uh, positive masculinity and stuff like that and yeah, it's something that's not really heard of within the male species to actually have to give consent because it's always been a thing where it's looked at as it's the woman that always has to give the consent. And you know, even when you talk to some men, they always say, well, it's up to the woman whether we have sex or not, but it's also up to them. Do you know what I mean? But because it's, we've allowed ourselves to believe that men are such sexual beings that have no control over themselves and them things there so therefore they can't actually 
resist, which is nonsense. It's absolutely nonsense. The main, the main topic of this episode is about getting consent, and that's the main thing that I just kind of want to like drill into people that you know. The most important thing is to be getting consent every step of the way when you are with um, a sexual partner, because you have to remember, or maybe I didn't make myself clear, but you know, silence isn't consent. Silence could be the person's frozen up, the person's, you know, so shook that they can't even speak. You know, if someone's silent, that doesn't mean they're enjoying it. So you have to ask, is everything all right? Do you feel good? Is everything, can I do this? If you're on a date with somebody and things are going well and, you know, you feel like, yeah, you want to try and kiss or whatever, you still have to ask, is it okay if I go in for a kiss? Do you know what I mean? You can't just assume that because you know they've laughed at all your jokes or they've kept you know engaged your conversation or been engaging with you with you that they're gonna accept a kiss from you do you know what I mean and trust me I I know what I'm talking about you know some people are just good at engaging people in conversation that doesn't mean they necessarily are finding the person attractive or wanting things to go any further it's just they know how to engage in in conversation my daughter's of the age like you know she's starting to notice you know men or oh, not men boys should i say and you know i've told like her like instilling her that you know no matter how much someone might tell you oh you're beautiful you're this or you're that don't think that is the reason for you to do something that you wouldn't necessarily want to do try and keep them interested in you or anything like that and I think that's something that you know schools really do need to talk a lot more about I do remember on lockdown or when the schools were closed and um she had a um I forgot what they called it but it's basically sex education and they were talking about consent but the thing is, I wasn't even happy with the way the teacher was teaching it. I can't remember how it went, you know. That's how, I'm sure if I was to ask my daughter, she probably won't even remember either, to be fair. There needs to be a lot more attention when it comes to, you know, teaching kids about what consent is and, you know, feeling in their own right to say no and things of that nature. Because trust me, I'm not going to lie, guys. If I was taught about consent in my day I don't think I would have gotten into certain situations to be fair if we were given the empowerment if we were empowered enough to say no do you know what I mean I don't think a lot of people that I know would have got into certain situations for real can't even lie but comment down below guys in regards to your understandings of consent and you know i wouldn't i don't want anyone to divulge anything they don't want to that's not what i'm saying but let us know what you think about what i'm talking about 